Hi loves, welcome, welcome back to the Stars Cartel channel. If you don't know, I am your girl Star, okay? And let's get in the message that God gave me for y'all today. My bookmark says, I always thank God for you and you are more precious than gold. In his dream, <laughs> in his dream, I was walking through a rain. It was like almost a hurricane, okay? I was walking through a hurricane to get me a pack of cigarettes. Legit. I knew that's what I was going to get in this dream. <laughs> I knew my intention was to go and find a pack of cigarettes. The scripture God gives me to go with this comes from 1 Chronicle 9 and 22. Altogether, those chosen to be gatekeepers at the thresholds number 212, they were registered by genealogy in their villages. The gatekeepers had been assigned to their positions of trust by David and Samuel the seer. They and their descendants were in charge of guarding the gates of the house of the Lord, the house called the tent meeting. The gatekeepers were on the four sides, east, west, north, and south. Their fellow Levites in their villages had to come from time to time and share their duties for seven-day periods. But the four principal gatekeepers who were Levites were entrusted with the responsibility for the rooms and treasuries in the house of God. They would spend the night stationed at the house of God because they had to guard it. And they had charge of the key for opening it each morning. Oh, hold on. Some of them, I'm going to keep going. Some of them were in charge of the articles used in the temple of service. They counted them when they were brought in and when they were taken out. Others were assigned to take care of the furnishings and all of uh, the other articles of the sanctuary, as well as the special flour and wine and the olive oil, incense, and spices. But some of the priests took care of mixing the spices. A Levite named Mattithiah, the firstborn son of Shalom, the Korite, was entrusted with the responsibility for breaking the off offering bread. Some of the Kohathites, their, follow their fellow Levites, were in charge of preparing for every Sabbath the bread set out on the table. Okay. So I feel like with this scripture and with this dream, okay, y'all? Because in the dream, I just felt crazy. I don't know if y'all know, but this actually happened to me. I, I think I even um recorded it and posted it on YouTube. I'm going to have to go back and see. But it was a snowstorm, and I was fighting to stop smoking cigarettes. It was a battle. It was a tough battle. But when that snowstorm came... While the house was fine, I was fine, my mother was fine, we was good, I ran out of cigarettes, and I was not happy, okay? I wanted to go get this. <laughs> the snow was so piled up, no car could make it, even to the corner store, okay? And I wanted to walk so bad, but it was so cold. I was just like, I refuse to go through this. I, I'm not about to put myself, I'm not going to do it. And I feel like this is for somebody, okay, you have, you, you've you been told by God to stop smoking cigarettes. You having a struggle, and you know, I've been there, okay, no judgment here. Okay, however, I feel like the reason that God wants you to stop smoking cigarettes is so that you know, when you smoke, like I said, I was I was really willing to walk through a snowstorm, almost. I'm not going to say I was willing because I didn't do it. But I was almost willing to walk through a, a snowstorm, the winter storm that hit Texas to go and get some cigarettes. I was upset that I could not get them. I had to, uh, you know, smoke half and save half. And then smoke half and save half. And I had to I had to really budget and you know what I'm saying? And in reality, this is for your own good, anyways. Okay, like honestly, cigarettes are not, they're really bad. They're toxic. They have thousands of chemicals. I know you already know that. Cause I knew that. Okay. And the crazy thing is, 
when a non-smoker would talk to me about it when I used to smoke and they would ask me questions like, how can you smoke them knowing that they're not good for you? You know what I'm saying? And I just had to, you know, I, I don't know. I just want to do it. And I feel like at some times when I used to smoke cigarettes, it wasn't that I just liked the taste because they nasty. Okay. It wasn't just that they made me feel good because they don't really give you as much of a buzz. Um, it did calm me down when I was angry, but in reality, it was something that I felt like every time I have ever, uh, snuck around or went back, it was because it was something I could control about my life. And, you know, when you feel like everything around you, you're being controlled or everything around you, you don't have any control of it. It can make you feel nerve wracked okay when i was working in a nursing home i started smoking cigarettes because i wanted a break okay and i found it unfair that those who smoked cigarettes got 20 breaks while everybody else just got their normal three okay two 15 minutes and one 30 minute break and that was it i i was bothered by that but you know as i said about the ten commandments they're not really hard Okay, it's not hard to follow the Ten Commandments. And even in this situation, God had given them this land, okay? God had given them all duties. And, you know, while even if you are thinking about it in today's time, which I feel like this may actually happen again with the way everything is happening in this world, I feel like God may actually rebuild a city specifically for his people. But... When God does, everybody is going to have a job. So you are not going to be able to go away from everybody else and walk all the way back to Babylon to get you a pack of cigarettes. No. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. You got to pick one. Either you're going to be in Babylon and you're going to go through the famine with them, which in reality, you probably won't even have no cigarettes if you're there. Or you are going to be in the land of the righteous and you're going to do what God is telling you to do. And that I feel like that is the message. It was even gatekeepers sitting here making sure that not who is who is going in and who is going out. OK, some people were in charge of the articles. Now, if you are someone that God puts in charge of money. If you're someone that God puts in charge of uh, specific things that are being used, gifts that are being given to God, and you take those gifts and you go and buy cigarettes, God is not going to be happy with you, period. God is not going to be happy with you. God is not going to be happy with you walking through a storm. And I feel like this storm is a representation of the things that are going to start happening now because we are in the end time. I don't know if y'all know this, but yes. And, um, and um, you know, if you are walking through this storm just to get you a pack of cigarettes, you are going to be in trouble. You, you never know what's going to happen to you. You never know what kind of harm is going to come to you. You never know what the intentions of the people that you pass, the people that you got to go and buy the cigarettes. Because even when we look at movies like... um. Oh, what was the name of that book? That movie, the book of uh what is the name of that movie where he had to walk through the end times with the Bible just to take it? I forgot Eli, the book of Eli. If we're living in times like that, you nine out of ten gonna have to go to one of these evil people to get a pack of cigarettes. They the only ones that's gonna have it. I'm being real. They're the only ones that's going to take out the time, effort, or energy to say, you know what? I'll go break in the gas station to take all the cigarettes. They're the only ones that's going to do that. And they know that it's going to be somebody that is going to have some kind of money and they're going to want some cigarettes. And you never know what their intentions are going to be. They may just take you out and keep the money and the cigarettes. They may be using it as bait. They may follow you back to the land of the righteous and try to take over. And while, of course, they're not going to win, but why do you want to bring that kind of headache back to the people of God anyways? And, you know, I feel like God is saying it's deeper than you just having a break. It's deeper than you just being able to relax. It's deeper than 
you just being able to calm yourself. Find some other kind of way to calm yourself because if God entitles you to do a duty here, you are not going to be able to take a break to go and smoke, period. You are not going to be able to take a uh, to hide and go in the corner and everybody is like, where is he at? Okay, no, you can't. <laughs> God is saying you are not going to be able to do this. So it's best that you nip this in the bud now so that when that time does come, you don't have to worry about that. And, you know, uh, when I first started giving my prophecies, I was I stopped smoking by force. God made me stop smoking cigarettes. I did not want to stop. But God made me stop smoking cigarettes. And, you know, I'm going to add because the thought is coming in my head. Even if you think to yourself, okay, so I know what's going on now, so I'm going to try to stack up on everything now. You're probably going to run out of that stuff, okay? You're going to eventually run out of everything, and when you run out, you're going to have to go through, um, what is it called? It's almost like when you don't have them no more, you know, you get angry, you start eat, overeating, you start acting a certain way, and I feel like I would prefer for you to go through that now than for you to go through that later um you know of course the choice is yours we have free will you know it's up for me because god will make me stop okay god will, god will put an end to it today okay <laughs> that's what happened that's what happened and i don't remember what happened as to why i ended up just i and it's like when i stopped i just stopped I just stopped, but I had no choice. And you know, um, yeah, this is a message for somebody. The reason that um, this message is coming to you, like I said, is because God is entrusting you. You are in one of these houses, regardless if you're a priest, a Levite, a gatekeeper, or um, whomever you are, okay? A, you are a part of Jerusalem. And God is saying, I don't want you to be having this kind of habits when I send you to my new place. When I send you to my new land, I don't want you behaving like this. I don't want you to have these kind of traits. I don't want nobody to be having to come and find you. I don't want to have to come down there and find you. Okay. And that is the message okay y'all as crazy as this message is this is the message okay and i know it's for somebody no, i know it's for somebody i know i know it may not be for a bunch of people but at least one person this is your message okay god is calling you to be a part of the house of jerusalem when the house of jerusalem is rebuilt okay when the city is rebuilt you are going to be called to go there and God does not want you going there with a backpack full of sticks, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I will be real. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool, calm, and collected. So, you know, if you want to have your all little tobacco filled in the back and you want to figure that out, do what you do, okay? But you is not going to be going to the store to get these chemically, like, no, just no, okay? No, no. I don't know why God told me because I'm pretty sure whomever this is for, you're trying to figure out some kind of way. You try probably thinking, well, they got it from somewhere. How can we grow it? How can we get it? Yes, you can grow tobacco. Touche. Okay, touche. Okay. <laughs> but to that point, if that's what you want to do, you need to start smoking the natural cigarettes. Not the ones with the chemicals. They do have the kind where you get the tobacco, you fill it up in the paper, and you roll it yourself. Okay? That's what you would have to do if that's your plan. If you just refuse to stop smoking cigarettes and God refuses to leave you out of the house of Jerusalem, fine. Touche. Okay? And I don't know why this just feels so crazy because I'm literally looking at myself, arguing with my not really with myself because I don't smoke cigarettes, but arguing with whomever this is for because I know what you're thinking. Fine. Okay? Fine. 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 Okay? But yeah, yes, God did make the plan. Yes, we can grow the plan. In, in, but if you're going to do that, you have to stop smoking these toxic Newports, 
Marlboro lights or whatever it is that you smoke, the camels, the humpbacks, let that stuff go, okay? You're going to have to do it yourself and you're going to have to prepare yourself now because then when the time comes, you're going to be wigging out and you're going to you're gonna be acting a fool. And I'm not going to deal with it. I'm just being real. <laughs> I'm playing. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to join the cartel. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Deuces.